all heroes start somewhere in their journey. For me, it was the hatred for being Jewish. Who would want to be Jewish in a world like this? I know what you're all thinking. What is that girl talking about? How can she possibly say something like that? Believe me, I'd be thinking the same thing. But unfortunately, that's how I felt throughout elementary and middle school. I was one of the only Jewish kids in my entire elementary school of over a thousand students. And middle school wasn't much better either. The sense of isolation and separation that came with being an outsider made me hate being Jewish. Why couldn't I celebrate Christmas and Easter with all of my friends? Why is there so much Christmas music and nothing for the Jews? Why am I being asked insulting questions about my religion when I'm simply painting a menorah in art? The list goes on and on. I'm sure many of you can relate. Questions such as these give me such negative feelings towards being Jewish that I wanted to convert to Christianity at the ripe age of eight years old. I felt like I was an outsider, cast out from a predominantly Christian society. And since my family seldom went to synagogue nor celebrated most Jewish holidays, I was incredibly disconnected from my Judaism. It felt like I'd been cast into a barren wasteland that consisted of a sparse number of Jews. This was a lot to cope with as a young child, so the hatred for being Jewish began to grow within. One holiday season, when I was about nine years old, I purchased a miniature Christmas tree. I wanted Christmas. I needed Christmas. I couldn't contain my joy and excitement. I rushed home, immediately setting it up. Though, to my surprise, none of my family was as joyous or as happy as I was. They just stood there, jaws on the floor, looking at their little girl who was all happy with her sacrilegious Christmas tree. I was infuriated because that was the closest I had come to experiencing Christmas and my parents had ruined it for me. I hated being Jewish. A couple years later, I went to my first BBYO event with my older sister. It was the first memorable experience I have with Judaism. I was accepted for who I was and I didn't feel like a Jewish loner. The warm welcome I received was incredible and just what I had longed for. The effect that BBOIO had on me after just one event was so intense that I decided to start expressing my Judaism. I asked my mom if she had a Star of David necklace that I could wear. So I started to wear my new necklace everywhere I went, to school, to work, to the grocery store, and even to the beach. That's when the anti-Semitism began in my eighth grade geometry class. It started with a guy who sat at my table, and at first, I didn't think much of it. I thought he was just being nosy. So my friend and I laughed it off. But then the anti-Semitic remarks began to increase in frequency and intensity, raising both distress and discomfort for me, as I was one of the only Jewish students in the entire school. It shifted from me and my friend laughing it off to him and my friend laughing at me for being Jewish. That'll show you who your true friends are. My friend had later apologized for her transgressions since she didn't understand the severity of what was taking place. The anti-Semitic remarks and harassment from the student continued to such a degree that one day he said to me, go kill yourself, Jew. I'd reported the anti-Semitism to the principal, which then created absurd amounts of unnecessary drama surrounding me and the fact that I am Jewish. Once again, I felt completely isolated and separated from the rest of the students in my school simply because I decided to express my religion by wearing a Star of David around my neck. I hated being Jewish. The anti-Semitism didn't stop there. Now, I'm in ninth grade with new faces and new opportunities. There was a student in my guitar class who, after finding out I was Jewish, would physically and verbally harass me. He would trip, push, and poke me, along with saying horrible things about my religion 
to my face. The irony was, is he was good friends with another Jewish student, but that student chose not to say anything simply because he was hiding his identity. Here, in my story, I began to detach from the borders that I created to protect myself. So, instead of bowing my head and feeling ashamed for being Jewish, I stood my ground and defended my identity. I wouldn't say defending myself was easy. In fact, it was quite the opposite. But nothing in life is easily obtained. Here in my journey, I began to become heavily involved in BBYO. Today, I love being Jewish, and I celebrate my Judaism through BBYO. The transition was slow at first, but my love has exponentially increased. It all began in May of 2023, when a good friend who was heavily involved in BBYO practically forced me to register for the summer program CLTC. It was the best decision of my life. During the 13 days I was there, I discovered what being Jewish truly meant to me. I felt love and warmth from a community that I didn't think I wanted to be part of. During the 13 days I was there, I discovered that I love being Jewish. Being Jewish to me means having friends from all over the globe and being friends with other Jewish teens who all embrace each other for the one thing we have in common. You guys know it, being Jewish. Today, I love Judaism and what it stands for. And instead of feeling shame, I now feel immense amounts of pride. I am proud that being Jewish is part of who I am and is within me. Now, I invite everyone not only to embrace your identity, but also to take it upon yourself and partake in your own journey of self-discovery, in whatever that might be, and wherever it may take you, whether it is religious or spiritual, because the journey is the most memorable and meaningful part of your discovery. Thank you.